but to ensure that no one who usurps the law can hide and claim to represent the law. And this is part of the problem. No one has stood up to the private bar guild with their private law and their private courts and said, you are an absolute disgrace to the divine creator. You are an absolute aberration. And your system can no longer stand as such a lie, a heinous lie against civilized history of law. It's gone on for far too long. Well, thank you. There's still a lot more to go, and I I look forward to sharing more with you next week. Next week, I need to show you the updates that should be on with land and definitely communities. Communities is, is crucial. In the meantime, I look forward to your feedback uh, and improving this. And again, thank you all for those that share your knowledge, your trials, your successes, uh, and, and let's move forward. So I'm open now to your questions. Thanks very much. Thank you so much, Frank. Uh, that's uh, excellent. Uh, now, another thing is, and this is also is crucial, is, is just to let people know is, there's no such thing as abandonment. Uh, I mean, the reason why moving forward with this uh, new information is uh, is also to reflect that, you know, it's not like uh, throwing out stones or pebbles and uh, that's it. So uh, as we all uh, move forward and uh, get to the apex and the, the, the root of the situation is uh, we see how important it is to uh, take uh knowledge and uh move it on forward so what i'd like to uh do is ask uh, callers uh to get into the queue uh for uh, the questions and answers and uh you do that by star 8 okay our first caller up is uh is truth seeker uh, sorry, it's Darlene 99 is first. Uh, Darlene, uh, you're on the air Hi, with uh, you Frank Claus. Good. Hi. Hi. Um, I sent out a um, ecclesiastical de- um, depot dishonor, and it was returned with an attached note that stated to whom it may concern, the court is returning your documentation with neither acknowledgement nor acceptance. There are no records within this court to which this documentation might apply. Now that's under the um, old process. I just need to know where to pick up and where to proceed. Good question. If you've had a court that's done the uh, we're hiding under the desk note, which is that that kind of note, then I, I suggest they've given you the free ground to move to the next level, which is the updated version that you see, which would start with the pronouncement of restitution first and then would follow up to the court. So the pronouncement of restitution goes to the most senior officials in the country first. It doesn't go to the court, yeah? Okay. Then you attach it to your EDP that then would be directed to the court. But I would, um, in your case, I I would, um, rather than send it back to them or proceed, I would probably start again because you're early in the process on this new form. That's my personal opinion. Okay, because I told the clerk, because I, you know, I was stubborn, so I called the clerk of the court, and I told the clerk that he was in dishonor, and he stated how can he be in dishonor when he returned the documents? Well, I I think on the new, have a look at the new EDP for court that is up on the site. And okay. you'll find that there is no line anymore that says receipt is acceptance, which is why they've done this. The receipt line was causing uh, these people to focus on that and not on the content. They were simply thinking, oh, oh, if we keep it, you know, it's an agreement. Um, the fact that you've sealed it, the fact that you've addressed it, it is, it is an agreement. It's an agreement that they have no right to dispute. So I would, I would definitely look at the new form. And if they repeat it on the new form, then I would continue. But this time, get two witnesses and go through the witness process that goes with this. Okay? Now, I have already did the uh, Ecclesiastical Depot 
with vital statistics. So this is on the court side, and I noticed that you have to get another birth certificate. Is that correct? Well, did you, Kate, you did, did you send an original? Or did you make a copy? No, I sent the original. I had to go get okay. it. Okay. Well, if you sent the original, then 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 what I'll look at is 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 what is an alternative in that process. Um, I, I would. What I would do is I wouldn't interfere with the vital statistics. I would rather than repeat both. I would focus on the just the court process. So I would do the pronouncement of restitution to um, to President Obama, Timothy Gardner, um, the Attorney General, and and um, and whoever the Secretary of Health is, and then I'd follow up with the court with the copy of that process with the witnesses. I wouldn't go back to the registrar because, look, you've already done that. You've already sent that off. Why go to the expense of that? I mean, the, the, the point of doing through the court is going to be enough to show them that you've, you've basically stepped it up to a different level. Right? Okay. Thank you, Frank. Thank you. Thanks so much, Darlene. Um, next up, uh, we have uh, Truth Seeker. Um, Truth Seeker, you're on with Frank. Yes, Brian. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi. Yes, uh, Brian Frank. Yes. Okay. Uh, the question that I have is on the uh, pronouncement uh, restitution. Okay. How do you coordinate the dates? The Eucadia date and time. You have that on here, known as, and I'm assuming you're referring to the Roman time. Now, do we? Let's say if I were doing that today, would I put February twenty third? Yes, and you'd go to the time converter. Okay. And you'd get the UKD date, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. By typing in just the date? Yeah, you type in February 28th and it'll give you the UKD date that you need. Type in February 28th and then it will give me the UKD date. Yes. Oh, okay, good enough. Just want to know how to coordinate that. Yeah, right. no, no, no. It's, and look, there's a lot of links. <laughs> okay. I don't, okay. There's a lot of information. So, yeah, if you get stuck, just let us know. Okay. Good okay. enough. Thank you very much. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, again, is uh, star eight if you want to uh, get into the queue for uh, asking questions. Uh, so, next up. And uh, we have Fordman. Uh, Fordman 1, you're on. Hey, Frank, how you doing? Hey, going well. All right, all right. Um, I know you've been quite busy, and I've been trying to email you, and I'm sorry. Um, I was wondering, is there something that could be set up in the future to where um, you have, like, a stencil for each people, uh, uh, let's say people in America, to know, uh, what departments to send their, you know, depot to and the next level uh, people to send it to if the first level doesn't, um, you know, honor it and so on. Yeah, we were thinking that way. And a few weeks ago we were looking at, at the Great Writs being the follow-up to the Ecclesiastical Depots. But this was before the realisation of actually what these depots are which they are perfected indulgences. So that they really are extraordinarily valuable. And, and what, what came back was that the local registrars at a state level, whether it be a governor or in places where they're called the you know, premier or whatever, um, they really are so absolutely wholly arrogant and corrupt that, that we're just wasting our time. We're just completely wasting our time if we think that getting, you know, pinning them for corruption and incompetence is going to make any effect. It's not. So now we're saying, look, rather than rolling up the existing dishonour, here is the clean version that starts and should start at a national level. So if you're living in the States, as the deeds say at the moment, you're starting with the president. You're starting with him. And then you're doing the treasury, you're doing the uh, health, 
you're doing with the, the Attorney General. So I think for most people, whether they live in Canada or Australia or United Kingdom or anywhere in the world, finding those positions is pretty straightforward. Yeah? Um, that's where the process now goes. Now, when you're dealing with a court, once you've sent off your pronouncement of restitution, then you're going to show the court that you've already written to the President. You've written to the Attorney General. You've written through and you've done it from the notorial process. So when you join the court in, you know, it could be a local court. You know, suddenly it's going to take a different tone altogether. Because I, I am totally over the outrageous disrespect that many of you have received from these people. I'm just, I, I honestly thought that there was more intelligence in the bar, which was my mistake. There's not. These people are not even a patch on the members of the bar 100 years ago. These people are just, uh, what do you call them? Fake. So, yeah, it's at a national level now. Is that pretty straightforward? Yeah, I think so. As um, far as, let's, let's say, uh, you know, doing your, your birth certificate, you would basically send that in to a copy to the, like, you know, with the depot on to the president and to or to the three different departments you just mentioned. Yep. To, to, and, 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 and just, That's why you need you know, to make copies of your, of your BC. I mean, I don't expect anyone to be paying. And look, don't think, you know, when people say, oh, but, you know, if you make copies, they say don't make copies, or, or if you make copies and it's not a certified original or a postal, look, we're, we're, we're kind of past all that. I mean, we're really saying at a national level, if, if, the, if the chief counsel of the President of the United States does not know what canon law is, then God help the place. Of course they know. Georgetown is just up the road. Yeah? yeah? They know. But enough's enough. None of this game playing, or as I said, pussyfooting around. All right? Got you. Got you. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you, Foreman. Uh, next up in line is uh, we have uh, Truth Seeker. Truth Seeker? You're on the air. Uh, no, you've already talked with me. Okay, uh, thanks. Is next up we have uh, uh, we have Ron D forty eight. Hello, Frank. Hello, Ron. Hi. How are you going? Good. Hey, can you just give us a brief overview of both processes? In other words, we have a court situation. We also have the registrar situation. Do we start off with both now with the deed of restitution and then go step by step after that? The deed of restitution only needs to be done once. Okay. And I and I and these are the these are the clarifications in the instructions that must be gotten right as soon as possible. So I appreciate the question. So the the deed of restitution only needs to be done once regardless of what, what process you deal with. Okay. Number two, num number two, the ecclesiastical deed poll that's going to follow up the um, the pronouncement of restitution uh, should go to the president, the secretary, and so on, which completes that first process. And at a court, the court deed is slightly different because the court deed is saying you do not have jurisdiction to hear this case. So what I'd like to be doing in future, we've, we've discovered, as I said, this, there's some opportunity to exploit the deficiencies in writ processes and, uh, and that causing effectively uh, to, to file a motion for, to dismiss before even the hearing. But there's also um, knowledge now based on what we've done to understand why the executor letter has had some effect if people have used it in the correct manner. Because there's also now the evidence that once the writ is issued and the, and the trust is established, they haven't yet appointed an executor for the case, which is a trust itself. Yeah? Right. It is. So, so that if you file the executor letter in, and it has to be precise, otherwise it will fail. 
if you file it before the hearing with enough time, 